A stall occurs when an aircraft's airfoils or wings exceed their critical angle of attack, resulting in the reduction of lift. This video focuses on power-off stalls, which simulate a stall during a landing. Pilots practice stalls so they can recognize the indications of an imminent or full stall during a power-off situation, such as a landing and how to make prompt, positive recoveries with minimum loss of altitude while maintaining coordinated flight. Before learning how to conduct power-off stalls, let's first examine what a stall is. The definition of a stall is when an airfoil's critical angle of attack is exceeded. An airplane generates lift with its airfoils. The pilot increases and decreases the airfoil's angle of attack to climb, descend, or remain in level flight. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line, an imaginary straight line between the leading edge and the trailing edge of an airfoil, and the relative wind, the direction of movement of the air relative to an airfoil. It is the opposite direction of movement of the flight path. As a pilot increases the angle of attack, the airfoil will increasingly generate lift until the critical angle of attack is exceeded. The air flowing over the upper camber of the wing begins to separate, causing the wing to stop generating lift and stall. To recover from a stall, the pilot must reduce the airfoil's angle of attack below the critical angle of attack, so it will generate lift once again. An example of how a pilot may experience a power-off stall situation is if they were to misjudge the distance above a runway and begin the round out and flare to land too high. The pilot would continue to raise the nose and reduce the power of the aircraft, thinking they are about to touch down on the runway, when they are really still well above the runway surface. The pilot would then stall the aircraft near the ground, requiring for a prompt recovery from the stall, and then to climb away from the runway surface and go around. First, perform the before maneuver checklist and select an altitude that would allow recovery no lower than 1500 feet AGL. Per the FAA Airman Certification Standards, Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude that will allow for a recovery from stalls above 2,000 feet AGL. As the clearing turns are completed, reduce the power to 1,500 RPMs and smoothly increase pitch to maintain a designated altitude as airspeed decreases. Maintain heading and altitude as the airspeed decreases. It is helpful to choose a visual aiming point as well as Bug the heading and altitude on the PFD for reference. As the nose is raised and forward visibility is reduced, the pilot's eyes need to move 45 degrees to the left, between the instrument panel and window frame. Pick a reference point and keep that point in one place with the rudder unless making a turning stall. If the object moves right, more right rudder input is needed. If the object moves left, less right rudder input is needed. As the airspeed decreases, add the first 10 degrees of flaps when the airspeed is below 110 knots indicated airspeed, and then incrementally the remaining 20 degrees of flaps when the airspeed is below 85 knots indicated airspeed. Maintain the desired starting altitude by increasing back elevator input until reaching 65 knots indicated airspeed, then establish a 65 knot descent to simulate a final approach to a landing runway. Trim the aircraft as necessary. After commencing a normal approach descent, as if on the final approach to a landing, descend approximately 100 feet or to an assigned altitude. Reduce the throttle to idle and continuously increase the pitch as required to maintain altitude, simulating the round out and flare when landing. The pilot should leave their right hand on the throttle. If performing a turning stall, add the necessary bank, but do not exceed a 20 degree bank. If conducting a straight stall, the pilot should continue to adjust rudder input accordingly to keep the side visual point in the same area on the windscreen. As the aircraft's angle of attack increases, the plane will begin to stall. The pilot will feel the aircraft begin to buffet or shake, which is caused by the separation of the airflow over the airfoils, while the control effectiveness will rapidly decay, which means control inputs will not be as effective as normal. The pilot should then call out stalling and initiate the stall recovery. The aircraft will experience one of the following stalls. If an imminent stall occurs, one of the wings of the aircraft stalls before the other and the aircraft will bank to the side of the stalled wing. Since the wings are stalled, the aileron control effectiveness is less, so the pilot must respond to the unwanted banking by applying the opposite rudder to bring the aircraft out of the bank. If a full stall occurs, a sudden loss of control effectiveness occurs, 
excessive sink rate, or sudden nose pitch down with a full-up elevator is experienced. To recover from the stall, the pilot must promptly and simultaneously decrease the angle of attack by lowering the nose, applying full throttle to create full power, level the wings using the rudders, if appropriate, and bring the flaps up to 20 degrees. The sight picture used for a stall recovery is when the aircraft's nose is brought equal or slightly lower than the horizon. Immediately after the stall is stopped, the pilot must establish a pitch attitude for a controlled climb to minimize altitude loss and establish a positive rate of climb. Remember, a power-off stall is simulating a stall during a landing when the aircraft is close to the ground. When a positive rate of climb has been established, the pilot should establish a VX pitch attitude, and when a positive rate of climb is identified by looking outside and at the instruments, the pilot should bring the flaps up to 10 degrees. Once the aircraft is in a positive rate of climb and is above 60 knots indicated airspeed, the pilot should bring the flaps to the up position. Lastly, level off at the assigned or desired altitude and resume a normal cruise speed by adjusting the power accordingly. Some helpful tips when conducting power off stalls are Clear the area and appropriately set the power for a stall by conducting the before maneuver checklist. Ensure the starting altitude allows for a recovery above 1500 feet AGL. Epic Flight Academy students must choose an altitude that will allow a recovery from stalls above 2000 feet AGL. Maintain the starting altitude when slowing the aircraft down to 65 knots by increasing elevator back pressure and incrementally add the flaps. Descend at 65 knots to simulate an approach to a landing. In a straight stall, choose an outside reference roughly 45 degrees to the left in the corner of the windscreen that is far enough away that it will be visible throughout the entire maneuver. Smoothly bring the throttle to idle power and increase and remain coordinated in the stall using the rudders. Smoothly pitch up instead of quickly pulling the elevator back and keep the elevator back pressure in until the stall occurs. If conducting a turning stall, keep the same bank angle until the stall occurs. Use the rudders and reference point if conducting a straight stall to remain coordinated and to keep the wings level as the stall occurs. React to the stall quickly but smoothly and methodically. Do not quickly apply back elevator input during stall recovery to avoid a secondary stall. Right after the stall recovery, begin a climb simulating coming away from the ground. Remove the flaps incrementally once a positive rate of climb and appropriate airspeed is achieved. Set the power for cruise after climbing, trim the aircraft, and maintain the desired altitude at cruise speed. Remain situationally aware throughout the entire power off stall maneuver by looking outside and referencing the horizon. When being evaluated by a progress check pilot or designated practical examiner while conducting power off stalls, the pilot must remain above 1500 feet AGL throughout the entire maneuver, maintain a specified heading plus or minus 10 degrees if in straight flight, maintain a specified angle of bank, if conducting a turning stall, no greater than 20 degrees, plus or minus 10 degrees, if in turning flight, while inducing the stall. Acknowledge cues of the impending stall. Private pilots need to recover promptly after a full stall occurs. Commercial pilots need to recover at the first indication of a stall, or after a full stall has occurred, as specified by the evaluator. Climb out of the stall and accelerate to VX if simulating obstacles, or VY if no obstacles are simulated. Return to the altitude, heading, and airspeed specified by the evaluator. Be sure to like our video and subscribe for more epic content. And while you're here, check out some of our more recent videos and playlists.